All right. Hey guys, RootBSD here with another technology video. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little different. This is my Pine Phone. It's an open hardware free software device running Manjaro GNU slash Linux. And as you can see right here, running kernel 5.15 Manjaro ARM, and it's running KDE Plasma Mobile. Now I've had this device for about six months now. To be honest, I haven't spent much time learning to use this device. I've been goofing off with OpenBSD a bit too much. But being a grown man with responsibilities who hates uh, cell phones and smartphones, I, I really don't like them. I realized that I need to take this device more seriously because people were getting mad at me that they couldn't get a hold of me. So I purchased this clear shell protective case and put on a glass uh, protective uh, screen. So, cause it's really fragile and I don't want to break it. I spent a lot of money on this thing. And uh, I flashed it to latest factory build of Manjaro KDE Plasma Mobile. And uh, I was really pleasantly surprised uh, 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 since the last time I seriously tried to daily drive this device, the battery life uh, was terrible. The user interface was very unstable and buggy and the touchscreen keyboard would barely work and uh, half the time wouldn't even load. I mean, it was just, it was just a mess. But uh, it's, they've definitely and greatly improved the software stack for the Pine Phone. Um, it's running so much better, so much better. And uh, I just I wanted to make this video about it to just to say that the Pine Phone is pretty much ready for, for uh, just basic, you know, cell phone, smartphone use with some caveats. You know, it's not going to be a replace your Android phones or your iPhones, not even close. It's not good for entertainment on the go. Um, but if you're a person that values privacy and freedom and free and open source software, uh, this is this is pretty good. This is this is going to it's it's going to be good enough. Honestly, um, they the user interface and the battery life and the touchscreen keyboard have improved immensely. And you can see here how smoothly it's running. Uh, it comes preloaded with some of these cool apps. It comes preloaded with a Telegram desktop. Um, it has some cool apps for that have like PDA kind of uh, functionality. Now the camera on board, the camera is kind of like a camera that you would expect from a phone from 2010. So I, you know, the camera isn't that isn't that amazing. Um, and I got two web browsers on here. I got Angelfish is the web browser it comes with. It's like a, a, a WebKit GTK kind of web browser. And then uh, you can install Firefox. It's called Config Mobile. Uh, I'm sorry, Mobile Config Firefox. Uh, that is a mobile optimized Firefox for uh, the Pine Phone. I'll bring it up right here. So here it is. And um, so, and also there was a, you know, when I first got this thing, there was a problem with the modem. It has a Qualcomm modem. The modem would just randomly disconnect from the operating system because the modem and the operating system, they kind of run separately from each other. Uh, but they've since fixed that problem. So I've had it, you know, I've had this thing running for 12, 15 hours straight and the modem, uh, was still connected, could still get calls and texts. Um, you can't get, uh, you can't, it doesn't support multimedia text, so you can only just get regular text, but you can get um, uh, verification codes. And uh, yeah, this is another thing, it just, yeah, man, this thing is just like, if you're not touching it instantly, it, it just, and you're gonna have my little notes here that I have up my screen. So you guys are just gonna have to bear with me. Um, so yeah. So this is the uh, the this is desktop Firefox. This is not a uh, this is not an Android app. This thing does not run Android apps. This is running bare metal Linux. Um, the desktop Firefox is fine for regular, just kind of lo uh, low, you know, uh, I guess low impact web browsing. Uh, YouTube will run, but I don't recommend running any videos in horizontal mode, and I don't recommend running any videos full screen. Uh, it will basically uh, uh, it'll it'll overload the device. But you can run videos kind of like this. Let's see here. Also, sometimes here, look, you can see how it's running here. Not too bad. I would say the streaming is kind of eh. If, there, I have a better option for streaming, which is to use a a, a website called Invidious. So what you can do is a, uh, and usually to do that, I'd rather do that here on Angelfish. Now here's Angelfish, it's the, the WebKit GTK uh, uh, web browser, and it runs a little better. Um, it uses up a little less memory, it's much better. So, you know, this this is great for reading and kind of doing basic web stuff, maybe ch maybe checking your email and stuff like that. Um, you know, if this is a, t uh, you know, this device is for privacy and freedom and free software. So it's not, it's not perfect, you know, and some people, it might be, you know, just because they really love all the features of their Android phone and all the, the the abilities of it, they might not be able to to make the compromise. But um, 
So if you go to a site like, here, we'll go to this site here, YouTube Bay. This is Invidious. Now this will run a lot faster. And then like, like if I ran some, uh, like what's just the first video that comes up. Now, uh, let's see here, battery life. Now you can go over about 15 or so hours without having to charge this thing. Uh, but that's when it's just sitting idle. So if you have it, in, you know, like if you're at work for like a long work day and you just have it in your work bag um, and you just need to be able to check messages and make sure, you know, maybe you have somebody, you know, like you have kids or animals or somebody's watching them and you just need to be able to check your messages. It's good for that. Um, uh, but uh, if you're just going to be like, like I'm playing with it right now, it's, it'll, it'll just run out the battery in a couple hours if you're just, if you're using a web browser and streaming video and audio. Um Let's see here. Uh, we'll play this. I would answer the phone just to help him out, but now when I answer the phone, it's, oh, see, here's God, another thing. Um, oh, oh no way. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I got Lewis cussing on my thing. Uh, when it's on battery, this thing likes to, to revert the audio to like potato audio to save battery. So I don't. Okay. So I'm back. Uh, so this is Nvidia's. It's an uh, alternative for running to YouTube, and it uh, it's way more lightweight. Uh, uses way less code. So here we'll run some Mental Outlaw. There we go. What's up, guys? So I've been running a tour relay for a few days now. Well, I know that my uptime says that it's only been running for 13 minutes, but I've got some of these flags here. I've got the valid flag. Yeah, like I said, uh, it uh, if it's been disconnected from the power source for any period of time, it reversed the audio over to potato audio. Um, it's a kind of an annoying thing that I've so, been trying to, to fix, but for some reason it just, it's just what it does. I don't, I don't know why. But, uh, but yeah. So, uh, you know, like I said, not the best entertainment device, uh, you know, for on the go, for streaming or gaming or anything like that. Um, you know, and Firefox is a little memory heavy on the device. It'll, it'll warm it up. Um, if you want something that's going to use a little less uh, memory, a little less CPU, definitely use Angelfish. Um, but yeah, and also it's great for SSHing into servers, except I tried to SSH into my server and uh, I got no connection. So I don't know if it's something going on with uh, the SSH uh, configuration on the phone or if I need to call my friend and be like, hey, what's going on with the server? I, I can't get, get to it. But, uh, you know, whatever. I, I don't know. I just... I can't have her. I tried to plan the perfect video, but it just, it just wasn't going to happen today. So we're just, we're going to do our best here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And then it does come with some, some neat, uh, apps. Uh, some, some, you know, some, uh, things I don't like about it. Uh, in order to text somebody, you have to have their number in your phone book. You can't just text a random number. You have to put, you have to enter in a contact and then you can text the contact. Um, I haven't figured out how to access my voicemail on here. I'm not even sure if I can uh, using my my service provider. Um, also, uh, if you're gonna get this thing, you know it just it's, it's it'll just make bare bones calls and texts. But just get ready for your your service provider to charge you the same price that they that people with an Android phone are paying. Which is just so it's just it's kind of overpriced because uh, this thing uh, the cheapest thing they had was thirty dollars a month, and I thought that was a little ridiculous just to make phone calls. I mean, and then and, and they said you had to have data so, because, you know, I got Wi-Fi at home. But So it has two gigabytes of data and, uh, uh, and unlimited calls and texts, but I can't even do uh, multimedia texts. And, um, you know, that's just kind of lame. But, uh, oh, well, you know, so. But, yeah, um, so the most important about it won't the most important thing about this thing is that you can replace the battery. You can remove the battery. Uh, it is an, it is an open hardware design. So uh, the schematics and the diagrams are easily available. Uh, nothing is locked down or proprietary except for the modem. But uh, there's not much you can do about that modem. And, and you ha it does have to have a SIM card. So, you know, you, there's a little bit of a trade-off. But, you know, the software itself is not spyware. It's GNU Linux. And it's uh, respecting your freedoms. Uh, this is a device that I think Richard Stallman could probably use. I mean, I don't know, he might find something wrong with it. But it's pretty close to his, uh, his idea of, of free software. Uh, you know, when you watch his talks about the, whether the, you know, is, is, are you running the software? Is the software running you or controlling you? Um, and you can secure this thing and, and make it somewhat glowy resistant. Uh, the Manjaro distro I'm running is not very secure. Uh, as you can see, it just had a four, uh, a four digit pin, 
you know, uh, and it really doesn't give you an option to create anything stronger than that. Um, I, I just, or I haven't learned how to do it yet. I don't know, maybe if there is, I, I just don't know about it yet. Like I said, I, I wanna learn about this thing. Um, from what I understand, po post market OS, which runs on Alpine, uh, is much better for security. Uh, it does support full disk encryption and longer passwords. And this thing also has hard, uh, hardware switches in the back. You have hardware switches for, you can get into focus, modem, Wi-Fi, microphone, rear camera, front camera, and headphone. So that could come in, in handy, let's just say, uh, I don't know, I mean, when, when the end of the world comes and, and uh, they're, they're out to get you, you know, you can, you can make this a little glowy resistant. Okay, yeah, another thing I gotta say about this device is that <clears throat> it loves skin oil. Uh, you, it, I don't know why, but just any of the oils off your skin just are just going to be all over this thing and it's just not oil resistant whatsoever. Um, but that's okay. You know, um, like I said, it's not, it's not, you know, going to replace your, your Android and your iPhones, but it's also not going to spy on you necessarily. And you can put different, uh, distros on it. You don't have to run Manjaro. You don't have to run KDE Plasma on it. It can run several distros, uh, post market OS, Alpine, Manjaro, Arch Linux, OpenSUSE, or Mobian, which is Debian, Mobile Debian, and um, Ubuntu. The four major mobile environments for this are uh, KDE Plasma, uh, KDE Plasma Mobile, Fosh, SXMO, which is Simple X Mobile, and Ubuntu, and Ubuntu Touch. Sorry, there's no no OpenBSD or FreeBSD support. Uh, with OpenBSD, the way they are constantly cleansing and re reallocating memory would probably make it very battery inefficient. But who knows? Things could always change in the future. OpenBSD is supported on numerous ARM devices, including the Pinebook. So you never know if maybe we might ever see an OpenBSD phone. Hope you know, That'd be really nice. Um, so what I want to do with this phone, I want to uh, daily drive these types of mobile distros. Um, like I want to, I definitely want to try Post Market OS, and I want to try uh, Simple X Mobile. Um, let's see here, and uh, I want to learn more about the capabilities of each uh, of each distro and each uh, mobile environment. And I also want to get more involved in the Pine sixty four community and the forums, so I can just kind of learn more about what I can do with this device and and kind of the tips and tricks of because of all you know all the different kind of problems you know might run into i know that there's scripts that you can run to kind of alleviate some of the issues um and i will post i'm going to periodically post reviews of each distro and mobile environment throughout the year uh this coming year and uh you know on top of the open bsd and uh you know content that i normally make uh because you know like i always said this is a technology channel and and i love open bsd but i also want to start branching out and, and, and doing some more Linux and FreeBSD and maybe even some NetBSD kind of stuff. Um, uh, so, and I'll be looking into strategies to improve the security and privacy of this device and just show you what the trade-offs would be. Uh, with, uh, you'd have, there'd be a trade-off with convenience that I'd have to make with this device. But as you saw the switches, you know, if you, if you, you know, t turned all the switches off, the phone would be kind of pretty unusable, but, um, you know, so uh, we'll definitely uh, do more with this phone. Um, that's all. You guys have a great day. Bye.